Why, yes, it's a bright and beautiful morning, and you are welcome to the brand new week, and of course, a brand new day here on your favorite breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria. Now, we hope that you've gotten over the weekend blues and everything. In fact, it couldn't have been blues because you were getting it on, if I think so. Well, hey, that's why we're here to help you get over that one and uh, recondition you for the week. It's your daily dose of premium family entertainment. We are exactly what the doctor ordered, so let me give you a tip. Now, you only get a head start by breaking down your complex, overwhelming tasks into smaller manageable tasks, especially for a Monday here. Simple steps, one at a time, they often help. Yes, so hey, get back to work. Don't save anything till tomorrow, Tuesday. That's what lazy people say. Thanks for letting us into your homes for a Monday morning and welcome once again inside of Wake Up Nigeria. Let's help you with that routine to get you on for today. In the kitchen with us today is a very fantastic chef, Chef Ugo, yay! Hi. Uh, how does it feel to be up so early on a Monday morning? Well, it feels good to be alive. First of all, we thank God for the gift of life. Yes, and indeed. I'm ready and motivated for a new week. Thank you, Amazing. thank you. I love people who are motivated. That's good. <laughs> Just keep being motivated and beautiful. Now, we've got a perfect show planned out for you guys today here for a Monday. So get in your most comfortable spot, lay back and enjoy a beautiful time on television here. My name is, of course, Ms. Ima Peel. And we have an amazing hour and 45 minutes to spend with you here. So remember, you can always use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC across all social media platforms to be a part of the show. And you can also watch us from absolutely anywhere you might be in the world through our mobile app that you can download from Google Play Store and also on iOS. And uh, yeah, remember to follow us. We are at TVC Connect on Facebook and Instagram and every other thing you can find. Now, let's let you know what we have coming on for today's show. Ekundayo Ayeni is a graduate of Federal University of Technology, Mina, and an alumnus of the Harvard University program where he studied digital marketing. He is a well-grounded and experienced in uh, the creation of wealth across many sectors, and he'll join us on Motivation. And on SME Today, we are joined by a representative of uh, AI Royale, or AI Royale, AI Royale actually, uh, known for its beautiful architecture and the flurry of activities available to guests. Now, it offers guests facilities like free Wi-Fi, a restaurant bar, barbecue facilities, I love barbecue and swimming pool, fitness too, and fax and photocopying facilities. Now, we'll be finding out how it all started and how they got so big and beautiful. Good morning. Good morning, hey. lady in red. Okay. <laughs> is sitting with me. Funny thing yeah. is, not everybody would remember that. Not everybody would know that track. Oh, no. really? Uh, well, of course. Uh, well, I know the track. Ja uh, yeah, we, 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 we both fall into <laughs> that category. Me. I. But we're young at heart. I'm vintage. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, it's just something about great music that just yeah. stands the test of time. Exactly. And that particular song, Lady in Red, I actually remember it mm -hmm. every time I wear a red dress. Ah, like today. Yeah, yeah. You look thank beautiful. You, thank you, thank you. How's your weekend? Uh, filled with education. I can see on your Instagram yeah, page. Yeah, I went for a leadership training in, ah, in Abuja. Nice. Um, and it was really eye-opening, uh, enlightening. And you know, education, you can never stop learning. Yeah. Um, you, but you need to be very, very deliberate and intentional mm -hmm. about the things you start to learn. Mm. So um, you ask yourself questions like, how come I'm not um, you know, doing better, you know, moving forward faster? Mm -hmm. And then you just mm. go for a course and it's like, oh, mm. that's why, you know. Um, so hopefully, what? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mazino. <laughs> Mazino. Hopefully I'll be able to apply some of the things I learned in the I'm next sorry, one year, JK. especially with how the world is changing. Yeah. Technology is taking over. Yeah. Different strategies are being applied to uh, the workforce different sectors. I, I could and, see that um, you had plenty of fun on your social media page. Education, I'm averse yeah. to right now. Why? I mean, you I'm, don't want to go back to school. I don't want to go back to school. My last experience was really harrowing. I was in it with your husband, by the way. Huh? It wasn't that I was <laughs> that a bad was, student, no. <laughs> but it was just, it took so much of, as in it what? was tiring. I hate what? being in the class. And so, you you just, is oh, it an authority thing? No, 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 no. First of all, I'm a rebel. I'm okay. the, I'm, I'm, I used to be the good guy in class, but okay. then in my older uh, <laughs> years, I started being the rebel, the guy who was like, whoa, 
the backbencher. <laughs> Not really a backbencher, okay. but I wanted to make an event of everything. Hmm. Everything had to be an event. Why did you fly down? Wow. Kind of guy. No. You know, so because I hated the monotony of it. Uh, yeah. Whiteboard markers and this equals that. Uh. I'm like, <laughs> but okay, so that the course I went for wasn't like that. It was more interactive, exactly. thankfully. As I said, things are evolving. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, if you don't want to go to school, why not open your own? Yeah. Open your own school. You could teach a lot of people. A lot yeah, of I stuff. do that on a regular. Yeah. I facilitate voiceover classes. Like online, though, right? Yeah, yeah. that too. Open a facility. Where where are you go? I I I done it. I oh you yeah? have yeah. Oh for real? Well, I haven't opened the facilities. Do you, how many backbenching students do you have in your? I class? love backbenching students because I can relate with them. <laughs> so if, if, if I was if I was a facilitator and there's a backbencher where I was vibing, well, like, hey, hey God. That's good. because it makes the class exciting. Okay. It's not okay. monotonous, not mm. boring. Mm. So mm. yeah, I'm that true, kind of guy. True, true, but true. in any case, yeah, um, <laughs> I wouldn't be going back to school. I believe in self education right now, and I believe that travel. It's okay. very big True. education True. because we're all so confined to these spaces, mm. you know, and it, it's, it's, it, it kind of like atrophies the mind, mm. you know, but when you travel, you're more exposed. And yeah. I don't even mean travel outside the country. Mm. I mean, travel within the country, meet new people, so meet new places, learn new things. School, I don't want to travel and go to school. I want to travel and party. <laughs> yeah, well, anyhow, it's Mazino's type that in about three years, you just see Dr. Mazino uh, by his name. But you probably get an extra PhD uh, as, some, sometime uh, soon. As mm -hmm. reckless it might have seen, as it might have seen as I was in, in class or any class of any sort, I often came out, this is what your parents say, but yeah. I often came out tops. Oh, okay. Um, Even despite... Despite disrupting all, all the yeah, class. Bes wow. I, yeah, bes the, the, besides the disruption, I came out second best in class only because I was a bit distracted. I would have been be first best in class. Yeah. Not with your husband, I mean. <laughs> I was, <laughs> before you now go and refute my claim that, Bahazino! <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. In any case, a lot happened this weekend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. President yeah. of Guinea was uh, not ousted, but um, arrested by yeah. the military government. Yeah. Um, a lot happened in the reality show Big Brother yesterday, mm -hmm. which has got me questioning our, our establishment of morals in, 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 in society. I think if you question morals, you're questioning the whole franchise of that show. I, I, don't, think, I don't think we should be scared to. I think it's something that we actually have to say, call out, because... It's not just kids now, it's even individuals, it's grown-ups. I mean, sure. we're beginning to establish certain um, practices that uh, in the next few months, and I'm not saying years, we're going to yeah. say, eh, it's yeah. not man. I think they do it in that show. Eh, yeah. now, eh, if you cheat, they use Remember we talked now. about that Asian country, I'm not sure which one it was, where the kids do, they don't go to class, essentially. Yeah, Japan. They do ethics Japan. and morals. Until Japan. they're in a certain grade. Yeah, exactly. A lot to talk about today. If you guys are going to stick with us, you guys are going to be a part of it. Plus, the kitchen is going to be whew, on fire real soon. So stay tuned. <laughs> we'll be back. Let's do the weather and the news. And you're welcome. It's past 7 o'clock. Well, uh, welcome for a Monday morning. My name is Mazino Peel. Let's do the news. Now, it's been more than a month since the National Association of Resident Doctors down tools. And despite the series of uh, roundtable talks between the federal government and the striking doctors, there has been no headway. Now, Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ngige has declared the federal government's readiness to meet the demands of the resident doctors, but the no work, no pay policy stands. The minister said the 12 point demand of the NARD have been met, and the only point of disagreement is Section 43 of the Trade Dispute Act, which establishes the no work, no pay uh, policy. Mr. Ngige also disclosed that the federal government is ready to drop the legal action it instituted if the doctors agree to resume work. The government is doing everything possible to make sure they get back to work. Out of their 12-point uh, issues raised uh, the, in, in their demands, we have <clears throat> done all. We have uh, come to agreements on all including those that even affect the Medical and Dental Consultant Association of Nigeria and the medical doctors who are in academics and teaching in universities. So we have handled all. The only point of disagreement now is that uh, they said that in the agreement, in the memorandum of action, government should insert include that section 43 of the 
trade dispute acts will not apply to them. That section says that uh, when a worker withdraws his uh, services from his employer, the employer is at liberty to withhold payment of a moment to him. And the ILO principles at uh, work and uh, at strike said you can use that money to pay other people you have engaged. Now, away from the doctor's strike, the Chief Justice of Nigeria and Chairman of the National Judicial Council, Justice Tanko Mohammed, has demanded the records of proceedings in all the suits from which conflicting ex parte orders emanated. Now, the chief judges of Rivers, Kebi, Cross Rivers, and Nambra Jigawa and Imo states are to be interrogated on Monday, that's today, on the controversial conflicting orders delivered in their various states. There are indications that the chief judge of Delta State High Court has also been invited to, do, uh, to meet with the CJN on Monday. Now, Justice Tanka Mohammed is also likely to meet with the leadership of the Nigeria Bar Association in the course of the week over the matter. Touching down on security matters now, the Niger State Police Command has confirmed the abduction of the Dodo of Wawa, uh, Muhammad Liu of Bogu in Nubusa, local government area. The traditional ruler was abducted in his palace at about 10 p.m. on Saturday night. The gunmen, numbering about 20, were said to have invaded the palace shooting sporadically. Sources say they, that the traditional ruler had retired to his room before he was forcefully taken. He was said to have been taken alone without harming anybody in the process. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has arrested a core member in Abuja for importing four kilograms of drugged candies from the United Kingdom. The 22-year-old serving was arrested following the interception of a consignment at the warehouse of the transport company and the LEA operator say. Now, the operators attached to courier company in Lagos also intercepted 1.2 kilogram of cannabis uh, concealed inside locally made cookies going to the United Arab Emirates and 920 grams of cocaine hidden inside synthetic hair um, heading to Saudi Arabia. Also, 384.7 kilograms of assorted narcotics being transported to Abuja for sale were intercepted and seized at patrol points in Lokoja, Kogi State, in the last one week. At least 30 persons were arrested and several illicit drugs seized in parts of the country. Now, let's go on a break. Do stay tuned. We've got more Wake Up Nigeria coming your way. Hello and welcome back. It's time to take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the papers this morning. We're starting with the Punch newspaper. Today is Monday, 6th of September, 2021. The Punch says, looming hospitals shut down, strike threat ridiculous, says federal government. Nard, union flay minister Ngige accuses health workers of intimidation. Uh, federal government worried. Yohesu accuses government of insensitivity. Minister misleading Buhari, according to the union. Beside the masthead there, we have this. says, VAT controversy. FIRS may lose 2.4 trillion uh, revenue to states. Trade zone attracts, a, uh, this is $16.6 billion foreign investments in 20 years. Right at the top there, it says, uh, oil, power companies, bank debts, rise to 6.14 trillion naira. Healthcare fund, federal government blames states for non-implementation of NMA and uh, non-implementation, NMA berates government. Presidency, PDP differ as regime lists Buhari's achievements. Let's see what else we have on the cover of the punch here. It says here, Nigeria rejects Gini coup, soldiers plan transitional government. Uh, let's see what we have at the bottom there. INEC redeploys Ogun, Oshun, Beelsa, REC's, others. Police begin manhunt for Shore Brothers killers. Uh, PDP, Afeniferian, knock government. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. Now we have other newspapers with us as well. We have The Guardian this Monday. It says here, businesses undecided over federal government states tango on VAT, says here, FIRS banks on stay of execution order, ahead uh, appeal court ruling. States, new custodians of collection until subsiding 
or rather subsisting order is reversed, say analysts. What else do we have here? It says uh, confusion as mutinous Guinean soldiers allegedly arrests uh, Conde lay claim to leadership and uh, gunmen abduct Niger monarch, lawmaker's family uh, in Katsina. That's Niger, rather Niger monarch, lawmaker's family members in Katsina. Ohaneze Ndigbo demands apology, restitution from Bokachua over alleged attack on Igbo. Now, that's all we have on the cover of The Guardian. And at this point, let's go for fitness. Welcome back. Yeah. Yes, indeed. It's mm -hmm. what's up and about myself and Titi here in the studio. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about one thing that I found on Instagram this morning and I thought was very, very interesting because I'm also celebrating some, well, not really sobriety. It's not yeah. like as if I've... Like I, a cleanse, right? Like a cleanse. A cleanse. A month and a half ago, I started this cleanse and mm -hmm. I um, changed a lot of things in my you know, uh, dietary uh, regimen. Yeah, so that was when you took the rice out and put no, the No, no, I took the rice in. out a year ago. Oh, okay. Which is why I'm sexy now. <laughs> um, okay. However... It's a full year, though. Yeah, it is a full year. Because I remember yeah. you had, like, more cheeks when yes, you came here. Yes, I did. Here. And people, please stop. <laughs> I'm okay. People keep asking, oh, what's wrong with you? I'm losing weight on purpose. Okay. Please, guys. It's a All choice. Right. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. In any case, um, Chrissy Teigen, she's yeah. celebrating 50 days of sobriety, uh, sobriety uh, where she's had no alcohol at all. Yeah. I'm also in about, I think, 50 days myself because really? I said, yeah, I, I haven't had any alcohol in 50 days. And I must tell you that the benefits are fantastic. I really? really feel much more healthy. Okay. I actually feel good. While I like to knock off, you know, from before, but mm -hmm. now, you know, I don't do that. And I, I think the benefits... You're not, you're not interested in it anymore? It was, or was it a health choice? Was there a health scare or something? Not a health scare, but it is a health choice. Okay. Um, I think the older you get, the more considerate you have to be about your own body. And it's 40 years of abuse. <laughs> <laughs> it's 40 years and of... not up to No, that. not up to Come 40. On. I didn't start drinking Come when I was a baby, on. but you get what I mean. So mm -hmm. after all that time, mm -hmm. plus you have to consider, when people you know start going in, in for medical checks and they're like, yeah. oh, my liver, oh, my kidney, yeah. that sends a message to you. It does. You know, because... And these are people who don't abuse their systems as much as you do. So uh, why are you pointing at me? Don't be pointing. Don't be pointing at me. Yeah, hey, when I'm pointing, point this, the rest are pointing. Yeah, uh, remember. <laughs> okay, so so you know, I, I've been considering doing this complete medical check. I'm talking about every single test under the sun. Mm -hmm. But then some people don't do it because it Scary. gives them anxiety of what could be. Um, yeah. You know, the the mindset of whatever will be will be. Yeah. But then I had to think about keeping my own self. Uh, strong enough because mm -hmm. of the fact that there's kids, there are other people relying on me now. Yeah. So it's not just about me. So it's probably somebody watching right now wondering, oh, wow, mm -hmm. I can't do 50 days. I can't do... I did a 100-day rice boycott. And oh. I did it on Instagram. This was about, uh, like, eight years ago now? Mm. Eight, no, no, no. Five years ago now. And people were following me. I was okay. like, day one, no rice. Day two, no mm. rice. Day three. So Sorry. that was... It gave me options... Uh, in terms of, like, my mindset broadening, thinking of other foods I could eat. Yeah, I'll tell you something about yeah. that, though. Here in mm -hmm. Nigeria, there's not much option after you boycott rice, yeah. unfortunately. I tried going vegetarian for a couple of weeks. Oh, it didn't last up to a week. <laughs> First of all, my bank account started registering. <laughs> because if you want to be a vegetarian in Nigeria, you have to consider this. You only have to eat vegetables. Yeah. Storage of vegetables in Nigeria is a True. problem. Why? Because mm -hmm. we don't have power to store these vegetables. They go bad. They're mm -hmm. perishable. Mm -hmm. So is it that you have to burn generator every day, keeping your fridge running <laughs> so your vegetables are going to be cleansed, or you have to buy them straight off the counter and it has to be all brand new all the time? Or which you is can very employ expensive. a caterer to deliver them to you It's every expensive. Day. At the end of the day, it's expense. Mm -hmm. However, my buddy said to me, Oh boy, oh boy. Stop there. Stop. Stop this. Stop, 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 stop. Hey, 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 hey. We're African. This is not what we were trained to do. Because I felt ill. Oh, I wow. actually felt ill because my body couldn't take the change because it was so drastic. Oh, so if goodness. you're going to go into that kind of a thing, I don't think it's something you should do cold turkey. I think you should phase so into it's it. It's because of those kinds of reactions that people end up going for really off options of weight loss. Yeah. So we're, we're not saying this is a, a good option. We're just saying be prepared. Mm -hmm. Prepare your mind and your body for what's Yes, about. do that. Tell you what, let's do a break. Interesting conversations still to come. Do stay tuned. Wake up Nigeria.
Oh, what joys it is to be in the kitchen every single time here. I always look forward to it. You are welcome. It's Wake Up Nigeria, and we are in the kitchen. In a minute, I'm going to don on my apron. But hey, let's introduce to you who we have here with us today. It's Chef Ugo. Hi, everyone. Who I promised to make a presenter out of. She did good in the beginning, <laughs> and you're doing good Thank still. You. So, what are we doing today exactly? So, today I'll be making um, gizdo dough. Gizdo dough. Great. I can see we have our ingredients here. Yes. Exactly what are we going to be making use of? Um, here we have our gizzard. Mm -hmm. It's um, diced already. Then mm -hmm. our chopped plantain, mm -hmm. which is also called dodo mm -hmm. in Nigeria. No, you don't, don't worry, we know already. <laughs> so here we have our onions, green pepper, tomatoes, pepper, oil, uh -huh. okay. salt. Okay. Wow, that's great. So um, exactly how long will it take us to make all of this now? Um, less than 45 minutes. And is this going to be something like, is this, are you going to say this is, this, could this be breakfast? Yes. Breakfast? Mm -hmm. Less than 45 minutes is a long time to make breakfast. Like I said, less than 45 less minutes. Less than 45 yeah. minutes. It's okay. And that's healthy enough for breakfast. But I see that there's plenty of oil. Are we going to be using too much of it? No, just like, little. Like, heard us talk about, you know, diet yeah, and everything. Just trying little. To like, you know, I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't want to be coming out all that. We have to fry this. Mm -hmm. We have to fry the plantain. Okay. And the geezer too. All right. With so, the oil. Uh, normally, my idea of gizduru is always like a sauce for something else. So perhaps yeah. maybe use it for rice. So it all depends on you. You can, you can have it as a lone meal. Mm. You can eat it alone without the rice mm -hmm. or boiled yam. Mm. So it depends on you. It all depends on you. There's plenty of meat, however, if it's <laughs> going to be... Yeah, but anyhow, I'm sure looking forward to what it's going to be like. Um, these are ingredients that you can get, you know, very easy stuff. There's yeah. peppers, there's tomatoes there. Bell pepper? Is that a bell yeah. pepper? Yeah. Bell peppers, onions, plantain, and then your gizzard, which you, yeah, you know, you must have pre-boiled. And on the screen, you can see the ingredients there already. So take note and make sure that it's something that uh, you've got all the right ingredients, and then you can put this together. What are we going to be starting with, however? First of all, I have to fry the plantain. Okay. Before I have to fry the gizzard. Mm. Do you want me to get you a frying pan? Which one would you want? Yeah. The wok or the small one? Which one, the big one? The big one. I'm going to get you the big one. Here we go. Yeah. I'm very scared when I'm in the kitchen because I'm Why? clumsy inside of the kitchen. I drop <laughs> things. And wow. so, yeah. Um, I'm so, going to try and, and, and not be clumsy today. Yeah, okay. um, where's our oil and stuff? I'm going to also start the fire for you. Okay. Which is very easy. It's electronic. All you need to do is tap on there. And our little baby comes on. Hang on a second. Yeah, like I said, I'm clumsy. <laughs> but uh, we're going to work this together. We're going to work this together. Right. So feel free. Let's just put that on. I will have to fry the plantain first, yes. but we're not going to be frying the gizzard, are we? We will. We'll fry them, yes. but at different times. Yes. That's a lot of oil. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just scared of don't oil. Worry. When you turn 40, yeah, things like... begin to uh, start to concern you. Okay, so sure. I, I get really concerned with all of that. Um, we're frying that. Do you want me to get started with the onions in any way or form? Because I can do that. Okay. Yeah, a knife. a knife, there you go. I've got more knives, don't you worry. I've got more knives are coming, everything you need right here on Wake Up Nigeria. So tell you what we're going to do while we're getting prepared for motivation, we might just run for you again those ingredients so you're sure you have all the right ingredients that you need for your giz dodo this morning. It's very easy, especially when you have Chef Ugo here. There they are. There they are, all the ingredients are on your screen right now, so make sure that you have the right ones. Alrighty, now that you know, by the time we get back, we'll be right into the process. Let's do some motivation and uh, yeah, we'll let you in on all the details when we get back. You know, I often try my best to let you do all the motivation. Now, this is uh, more of a techie uh, version of a conversation this morning. And today we have Kundayo Ayemi, a graduate of Federal University of Technology, Mina, and an alumnus of the Harvard University program where he studied digital marketing. He is well-grounded and experienced in the creation of wealth across many sectors, and he's joined us on Motivation to talk about the difference between digital and TV or television marketing. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Titi. All right, so um, digital marketing... 
and TV. For those that don't understand exactly what digital marketing entails, they're probably used to just maybe the door-to-door -door, uh, marketing style or, you know, uh, when you go into a particular customer care service center or you have a marketer yeah. come to your office. Let's explain what digital marketing actually represents. Okay, so uh, in simple terms, it's taking the digital side mm -hmm. and adding it to marketing, um, which is more measurable at this time, okay. uh, more engaging. You have more luxury of content, more luxury of all forms of uh, platforms you can place them in. Okay. And then um, the mobility of such content is now very high. So mm -hmm. uh, that's primarily what drives uh, digital marketing. Um, and then the kind of audience are very specific this okay. time around, not uh, like the other channel, which is like the TV, where you're sometimes not sure of the kind of audience are watching you at a time. You're looking for peak time. You're looking for how to optimize. While in digital, it's more about understanding the persona, understanding the lifestyle, the behavior, yeah. uh, their touch points, their, uh, their flair, their psychographics, all mm. those things, understanding their needs. So, for example, I have an item, um, I come on TV, I want to sell maybe a mug, uh, I come on TV. I talk, I don't know who specifically is watching me at that particular time. But with terrestrial, with TV. Exactly. Yes. Well, if it's a mug, I know that uh, there are peak times to make sales. For example, we, we drove something for uh, palm slippers and um, easy to wear shoes okay. for a particular client at a time. Mm -hmm. We noticed that uh, purchase were not done in the morning mm -hmm. and then purchase were done more, more in the midday. So we're able to predict such sales because of the digital uh, drive uh, models that we run, and okay. then we also now probe further to see why. So at those points, people are getting tired of wearing shoes; they are heavy shoes. Yeah. So they yeah. went for the uh, palm for palm slippers. Yeah. We did something for a pharmaceutical company, and we noticed that uh, that was pain relief drugs. People were not buying during the day, and one night I was just up tweaking the campaign, and we noticed that uh, at midnight, from past twelve. The purchase was high till 4 a.m. Wow. And then we started sending um, questionnaires to purchase, you know, uh, people bought and asked, you know, why? Why is this, why is this sales higher at that That's time? That's okay. the time when they feel the pain in itself. So mm -hmm. back pain and all of those kind of pains really would not affect them during the day because they have too much engagement around them. Yes. So they'd be distracted from the pain. But when they're on the bed mm -hmm. or they're sitting up That's at night, right. That's when they really want to make that decision to make sure this thing goes away. So but if you're okay. using the TV, you cannot predict such models. You cannot say the time. So I guess... Um, for marketing to be measurable yeah. is what we're driving at now. Exactly. Uh, to be able to measure who and who are watching or listening to the content. Exactly. So you optimize yes. for revenue, for okay. growth, for engagement. for. So this basically means activity. that the average uh, boutique owner, um, if she wants to market a product, she finds more value in digital marketing than TV marketing. Is that what you're saying? E, uh, so... Uh, the advantage for them at that point is that if I come to a TV, there is a sunk cost that the TV already has, which okay. uh, will make my cost of marketing go above the line. Okay. But with a $20, mm. I can go online, start something with my small boutique, yeah. and I drive to optimize for profit. So uh, it's easy for me to measure that, okay, I spent $20, mm. and then I'm getting $40 in revenue back, mm. so that means I've made a profit of $20. Yeah. So while on the other side, if I come on TV, there's a very high chance I will have high visibility, mm. but I may not get my revenue Okay. Um, at that point. So there are primarily four uh, objectives that business owners go for. Either they want to make more money yeah. or they want to reduce their cost, they want to increase their market share, okay. or they want to make, um, they want to strengthen their brand in the markets. So it's one of those four primarily. So if you go for any of those four, most likely TV will generate more visibility for yes. you than to drive revenue or reduce your costs. Okay. So, but now you're saying uh, visibility versus actually making money yeah so you know cash is king that's what yeah, they say actually, cash is king yeah the money must come in yeah uh in order to keep going but then um we do know of the fact that not everyone is online not everyone is on the internet Obviously. can you give us some statistics on how many people are actually online right now versus people who are still so 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 um if I'll use the Nigerian data yeah. that we've been able to, maybe something we have earlier this year, we have about uh, 43 million Nigerians who are actively 
online. 43. 43 million out Nigerians were active. Out of how many? Out of about 200 million as uh -huh. we have it. And NCC at some point, maybe <laughs> during the last elections, mm -hmm. gave a data that they have about 120 active lines, mm -hmm. which they've said they've crossed over board now. Yes. But um, the ones that are active. active phone lines. Yeah, active okay. phone lines. Yes. So uh, sometimes you find people who have two, three, you know, nice. four phone line. So we're talking of the people who are active, who are using the social channels, who are using the internet regularly, but there is a docile part of about 20 to 40 million people who are online, but they are not active. Okay. We just come once a while, maybe yeah. check emails, and then they disappear for a week or something. So how are we able to... So I know that uh, with platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and other social channels, yeah. you know, they've actually created business portals for people where they where you can use to gauge analytics and, and the like. Yeah. Um, whenever you have, for instance, a brand new client who doesn't understand what it's about, what is the advice you give? Okay, so uh, we give two advice from two perspectives. Mm. Uh, first, we understand your product. So for example, if you're selling real estate, your product has a buyer's journey. So your product would, ha would take between maybe two to three months before they make closure, and sometimes as <coughs> it spans up to six months. While if you're selling products that are lifestyle products, like shirts, trousers, yeah. wig ones, and all of that, uh, those decisions can be made in hours. So I want to buy a shirt, I go online, I like the shirt, I make purchase. If I want to buy a property, I look at the place, I like it, I bring in my spouse, I bring in my uncles, yeah. my friend, all the real estate people I know, verify this thing for me. That's the buyer's journey. It takes some time. So those are the first primary conversation I have with any client. So okay. are you willing to go this long haul? And mm -hmm. then there are things that they call the advert waste. Okay. So somebody will tell you, oh, I've spent 200 million, mm -hmm. 100 million, or 10 million, or 1 million on advertising, and I've not been able to close the number of deals as okay. promised by other people. I don't promise you closure of deals. I promise you that I will generate leads. Oh, and those are okay. the people that are now left for you to close the leads. So now the challenge is something people don't actually close the leads exactly so digital so, marketing isn't going to equate to sales unless you follow up exactly Okay. So there is a number of sequence you're supposed to follow. So yeah. for purchase to be made, yeah. most times people get to see your advert at least 21 times. Okay, So at least 21 times. You know what, there's yeah. so much more to talk about on this, but I appreciate the fact that you've given us a lot of questions to ask. Please, if you have questions about this, uh, well, digital marketing versus TV, uh, you should hit us up via social media. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. And let's see if we can answer a few of them. Please join us online. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right, you. then we're going to be moving on now. Let's take a quick break, but there's still so much more to come right here on Wake Up Night. Yeah, all right. Hey, okay, welcome back. We are bantering about what's going on here. We're still in the process of frying our plantain with Chef Uwe. We're doing gizdodo this morning, so you guys are welcome to also join in, especially in the sharing of it. The process we're at right now is simply just making the plant, saying, uh, where, what are we going for, golden brown or dark? Golden brown. Golden brown. Because we're still going to put the uh, what, gizzard inside of the oil, or we're going to drain the oil out first. No, we're going to put it inside. We're going to put it inside of the oil. Yeah. Ooh. I see we've also cut our bell peppers, yeah. and uh, that's also going to go in as well. Yeah? But no. I don't see that we've seasoned it at all, or is the seasoning already done in maybe the... No, it's not done yet. Okay. When so, we're done with the plantain and the gizzard, mm -hmm. then we'll um, garnish it with some yeah, seasoning. Yeah, we'll garnish it, yeah. And all of that. Yeah. Well, do remember now that this can be breakfast for you, so just in case you're thinking of maybe taking off, preparing this for work, you can actually do that. It's easy to prepare, like Chef Ugo says. It's only going to take you less than four to five minutes, so, you know, and the ingredients you can get in the evening as you're coming back from work the day before. Just simply stop by and get yourself some plantain, some gizzards, some oil you always have at home, and some bell peppers from the um, vegetable store or the grocery store. And anything? Did I miss anything out? I didn't miss Nothing. anything. Nothing, yeah? You're salt and seasoning, and then you're good to go for breakfast the next day. Now, um, this can also be dinner. Could it? Yes. Could also be. Apart breakfast, from... Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. mm. It all depends on you. Yes, indeed. But apart from gizzard, if I'm not a gizzard person, can I substitute the gizzard mm. with something else? That's like taking chicken. away the name. It's gizdodo. <laughs> exactly. It can't be chick dodo. It could be chick dodo. We could make something else. I don't I know. But could I? What, what would you best substitute with or what would you suggest? Maybe chicken. 
Maybe a bit of chicken. Okay. Chicken is not bad. Or beef. Beef gets in your teeth. I don't like, don't <laughs> like beef. It's, you know, the problem with people who have closely spaced teeth like mine. Okay. We don't like beef. I don't like beef. I don't know about other people. But yeah. So how long are we going to do that for? And are we going to use all the oil? Because that's no, my we're concern. Not we're not using oil. I'm just using it to fry, to deep fry the plantain and gizzard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we're going to drain that I off because I see almost, that we have our seed. It's almost ready. All right. Okay. Good. Good. Now, this is fantastic stuff here. If you're enjoying okay. the sights of it, well, hey, wait until you taste it when we're done. As you can see, Chef Ugo is already going to sieve all the oil out. And, uh, yeah. So while that is getting done, do stay tuned because we are all ready for the next one hour of the show. We're going to be bringing you some great content in there. So do stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, hey, it's still the most entertaining breakfast show on Nigerian television. Wake up, Nigeria. Welcome to the second phase, the second hour of your Feel Good Monday edition. Yes, sir. As we get our passion this Monday, it now depends on what you're passionate about. Remember, when work becomes play, it's a lot easier to get things done. Yeah, I always say make sure you do what you like. That often helps. Well, hey, you can't be further from the truth. Hey, Titi. Thanks. Now, that's why we are your number one every single time here, every single episode perfectly planned out to get your day started and get your week on. Thank you so much for joining us. We have another amazing 45 minutes left. And, of course, you can use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC to make sure you're part of that journey. It is the best breakfast show on TV. And I, we say it all the time. <laughs> and we speak it into existence. Hey. Yes, I'm getting all motivational on you. Uh, because you can watch us from anywhere. We're literally out there for you. Yes, indeed. Download the app, by the way. It's easy to download on Google iOS, or rather Google Play Store and iOS. Um, and uh, yeah, you can carry us with us, uh, carry us with you, <laughs> wherever you're going today. Now, let's let you know what we have going on for the next 45 minutes. On SME today, we are joined by a representative of AI Royale, known for its beautiful architecture and the flurry of activities available to guests. Now, it offers guests facilities like free Wi-Fi, a restaurant, bar, barbecue facilities, and also swimming pool and fitness center. And um, other like uh, official, you know, uh, type uh, 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 functions that you would need probably there for a business meeting and all. We'll be finding out exactly how it all started and how come they've gotten so big since then. <sighs> Welcome back. Now, yeah. it's, it's, it seems to be call out season on Instagram or mm. social media lately. Mm. Everybody is calling out or being called out. Mm. Uh, especially if you are in media, it seems like as if there's a big bullseye on people's back. Um, over the weekend or <laughs> over the past week, we've had uh, um, the twins, um, Peter and Paul. One of yeah. them got divorced and everything. Mm -hmm. And we've had Two-Faced and Annie Dibia. And yeah. lately, only just from yesterday or the day before, was Nadu and his ex-wife, Uzo, I think is her name. All going at it. Yeah, now, I'm not going to go into the particulars of mm -hmm. the instances or what's going on inside of these marriages and all of that. But my question is... The, so, the use of social media, the use of that public jury as a, you know, seeming tool. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not with it. I don't know what so, you think. So I've, I've, always, I've always wondered about it. Um, and I've actually wondered about if I, I would use it for anything like that myself. So that kind of reflection, like what exactly did they expect to gain mm -hmm. from it? Um, and sometimes... Hmm. Okay, so using social media ha could be two could go two ways. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, construed uh, as a joke or mm -hmm. something less serious than it actually is, mm -hmm. or it could be taken overly serious. Now yeah. you never know what is going to happen once a story breaks. Right, in the case of a, a lot marriage, of people, that's a serious business. So yeah, putting out stuff that happens exactly. inside of a marriage is not play a play. You're thing. never sure yeah. how it could go. Some people could even put out things as a joke, and mm -hmm. then it goes awry. Mm. Some people put out things that are serious, uh, serious and then it gets turned to a joke. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you don't want anyone to, for any reason, turn your marriage to a joke. Yeah, well, putting you it on that. social media, first of all, is a joke. Is mm. what I feel. I mean, mm. there's no there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. Let's let's get that out the way. Of course. Um, and if you subtract social media from 20 years ago, how did people used to take care of their marriages? It would be mm. in the confines of, you know, Privacy. Yeah, Perhaps sure. maybe one or two people, which 
some people suggest would be people who are either your counselors or your, your parents to help. But putting it out there for everybody to see is like having a bowl of feathers, yeah? And putting it on somebody's doorstep okay. and expecting them to open the door in the morning to see all the bad things they've done. Yeah. If those feathers represent that. Yeah. The wind is just going to take it out. Yeah. Now, by the, time you guys, by the time you guys settle all your issues, yeah. how are you going to go back and start picking all those picking feathers? All those feathers? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to find them? Where have they gone? Who's used them to clean True. their ears and stuff like that? Ew. <laughs> you know, tickle okay. a lot of people's ear and everything. Yeah. So that's my thing with, with social, so, using but, you social know, media. Putting it out there has always actually been a thing. Even with the traditional press of back in the day, the tabloids, mm. the original paparazzi. Now. But, well, I'm, I'm talking about those who had a lot of visibility, you know? Those guys mm -hmm. were everywhere mm -hmm. putting things out, but they were also investigating. They were also mm -hmm. putting a lot more effort You mean into back it. then, yeah? Yes, back then. Because right now... Right now, there's no investigation. There's just assumptions and judgments on the spot. To, to, to touch the fringes of the last instance with, mm -hmm. with Nedu and mm -hmm. his wife, where she put out something and then he put out a very damning um, rebuttal, mm -hmm. um, you'd find that the facts were kind of like skewed Mm. in her favor from before and even and we're not turns. even absolutely sure what his would uh, uh, it, that, that's always two sides to every story of and inside of every story there are always mm. little nuances that make it go left or right so facts social mm. media mm. guerrilla journalism yeah everybody went on it what's your name uh blessing ceo has gone on it mm. this one's gone on it. everybody's mm. gone on it. it's become like an industry where everybody's just simply waiting for your thing to go wrong so Click they can mouth bait. off on it is that Click what it's bait. called Clickbait. First time I've heard about that. Clickbait, um, looking for something to draw attention to your pages. And stories like this are clickbait. Mm. Do not, in my opinion, you should not let your story become clickbait. Yeah, Something don't. someone else is going to use to make money on their pages. Yeah, exactly. Try it's and just... resolve these issues privately as yeah. much as possible. All the advice they're giving are not altruistic. They're all just exactly. selfish, honestly, if you ask me. Tell mm -hmm. you what, hey... Keep your private business private. Keep it off social media, please. You can resolve it. No marriage is perfect. We'll tell you that for a fact. Let's do the weather. Welcome back. Past 8, Wake Up Nigeria here. My name is Mazino Peel. Let's do the news. Now, it's been more than a month since the National Association of Resident Doctors down tools. And despite the series of roundtable talks between the federal government and the striking doctors, there has been no headway. Now, Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ngige has declared the federal government's readiness to meet the demands of the resident doctors. But the no work, no pay policy stands. Now, the minister said the 12-point demand of NARD, that's the NARD, uh, have been met. And the only point of this agreement is uh, Section 43 of the Trade Dispute Act, which reestablishes or establishes the no work, no pay policy. Now, Mr. Ngige also disclosed that the federal government is ready to drop the legal action it instituted if the doctors agree to resume work. The government is doing everything possible to make sure they get back to work. Out of their 12-point uh, issues raised uh, the, in their demands, we have <clears throat> done all. We have uh, come to agreements on all, including those that even affect the Medical and Dental Consultant Association of Nigeria and uh, medical doctors who are in academics and teaching in universities. So we have handled all. The only point of disagreement now. Now away from the doctor's strike, the Chief Justice of Nigeria and Chairman of the National Judicial Council, Justice Tanko Mohammed, has demanded the records of proceedings in all the suits from which conflicting ex parte orders they emanated. The Chief Judge, uh, Chief Judges of Rivers, Kebi, Cross River, Anambra Jigawa, and Imo State are to be interrogated today on the controversial conflicting orders delivered in their various states. There are indications that the Chief Judge of Delta State High Court has also been invited to meet with the CJN today. Now, Justice Tanko Mohammed is also uh, likely to meet with the leadership of the Niger Bar Association in the course of the week over the matter. Touching down on security matters now, the Niger State Police Command has confirmed the abduction of the Dodo of Wawa, Mohamedou Liu of Bogo, in a new Busa local government area. The traditional ruler was abducted in his palace at about 10 p.m. on Saturday night. The gunmen, numbering about 20, were said to have invaded the palace, shooting sporadically. 
Sources say that the traditional ruler had retired to his room before he was forcefully taken. He was said to have been taken along with, or rather taken alone, without harming anybody in the process. Outside of Nigeria now, the Taliban in Afghanistan have been accused of killing a policewoman in a provincial city. Eyewitnesses say the woman, Banu Negar, uh, was shot dead at her family home in Firozko. In Firozko. Uh, her relatives say three gunmen searched their house before trying, uh, tying members of the family up. The Taliban has denied any involvement in Banu Negar's death. Spokesman uh, Zabuli, Zabuala uh, Mujahid said the investigation is ongoing and the Taliban have already announced an amnesty for people who worked for the previous administration. Since taking power on the 15th of August, the Taliban have sought to portray themselves as more tolerant than their global reputation suggests. But incidents of brutality and uh, repression are still being reported in parts of Afghanistan. And that's it for the news this hour. Let's do more Wake Up Nigeria. Do stay tuned. Oh, wow. Interesting song there. Baby, thank you very much. That was beautiful. But things have been happening here in the kitchen. We are afoot when it comes to breakfast this morning. And as you can see, the chef is already well, getting on with the sauce that's going to make our gizdodo um, eventually. We fried our gizzard. We fried our plantain. Now, what are you doing, Chef Ugo? So now um, I've added the onions and the tomatoes okay. with pepper mm -hmm. and our seasoning cubes. All righty, all righty. So I'm just going to stir fry. Mm -hmm. Now, we use a little bit of the oil from yes. frying, just a little bit. You remember, I was very concerned about the oil. We didn't use all of them. No, that would, that would just be like an overkill. So it's just a bit that we have used, yeah? yeah. Uh, and now um, we've put the bell peppers, the tomatoes, the onions, a bit of seasoning. And what goes in next, please? Uh, salt, then. Salt, okay. All we'll right. allow this cook a bit before okay. we add our plantain and gizzard. Okay. Is it going to be mushy? Because I, I thought it was going to be like hard, like pizza. But it's seeming like it's going to be very mushy. Is that it? It's, it's hard? Hard? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be kakaraka. No, 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 no. No, okay. Obviously not. Okay. I'll well, tell you what. This is going to be ready in just a bit. We're yes. almost there. We're just, um, you know, final home run. That's what we're doing. When we get back, perhaps the next time you see us, it will be fully prepared, but we'll guide you through the process that we've taken. Let's do a break. We'll be right back with some SME. Welcome back. Now it's time for SME right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Now we're joined by Mr. Martins Dareno. Now he represents AI Royale. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, uh, amazing architecture, and uh, has a flurry of activities for its guests. It's a hotel, restaurant, barbecue, swimming pool, fitness center, so many great things, all packaged in the wonderful town of Ikorodu. Yes, you heard me right, Ikorodu. Uh, we have uh, you here talking to us this morning. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning, CT. Thanks for having me. All right, Mr. Martins. Yeah. So you need to talk to us a bit about this facility. First of all, it's a very big facility. Isn't it overwhelming to run such a place? Oh, well, yeah, the um, risks and challenges to run the place can come in. But then we offer a very luxurious service. Mm. So that um, doesn't deter us from doing the best to make sure that our facility is up to date for our um, guests and customers. Okay, so how, how long has AI Royale been, been around? Oh, yeah, we've been running for um, close to seven years now. We okay. started in 2014. Okay. And um, it's interesting to know how far we've grown over time because it, it started with a marquee hall, like okay. a tent kind of hall yeah. with um, an outside bar. Mm -hmm. But right now, um, we moved firstly to a 15 rooms, well-furnished um, hotel okay. with a swimming pool, a bar, mm -hmm. and um, um, gym. Okay. But then we've also gone a top notch, yeah, a notch higher, okay. having 32 rooms now. And we are even expecting another phase. There's a lounge, there's a nightclub, and then um, wow. all of these things have come together to form uh, the, the great service that we give the luxurious guests of our area. Okay, so I'm thinking about the fact that uh, most businesses rely on location, location, location. True, yeah. Location, location, location. You would have thought that such a, a, a huge investment would be taken to a place where 
it would be assumed people could pay for such luxuries. Okay. So what's the mindset behind putting such an investment down in that particular area? Of course, so so it, there's there's a uh, misconception about Ikorodu. Mm, you're yeah. one of those people. <laughs> you're going to defend your town. Yeah, it, okay. It's, it's not a defense. This is oh. actually backed up by data. So okay. We have Ikorodu as like the most populated mm. um, local government in Lagos. Okay. First of all, that's fact. Yes, that's okay. fact. Okay. And when you have that kind of place. Um, you know that all categories of people are there. Okay. So there are those that can afford it, yeah. and there are those that are working hard to afford it, okay. and just the lower <laughs> class. So we did not look at it um, in wholesome, in a wholesome form. We tried to create that service for people, and it's an hospitality service. So mm -hmm. it's not just for people in that vicinity. Mm -hmm. People from all parts of the world have come into iRoyal, wow. and we are able to serve them. I'm so interested in, in um, the fact that you just said all over the world. So yeah. you've become like a, like a tourist attraction. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the structure is beautiful to look at. Yeah. Customer service is top notch. Mm -hmm. And um, we have really raised the bar high mm -hmm. in um, housekeeping. Cleanliness is okay. our watchword. Okay. And um, we, we update our services from time to time. We are very strong on feedback. So any feedback we receive, we work on it quickly. So it, all these things attract people to the facility. So, um, okay, when, where I was driving at when I said all over the world was yeah. that I, I believe you're probably taking advantage of di digital marketing and online platforms to help. Yes, we have our website, irealhotel.com. Okay. Um, it is um, built in such a way whereby anybody in the world can reach it and book, make bookings, okay. see our facilities and get in touch with us. Okay. And we are also very strong on SEO marketing. In fact, if you go on Google right now yeah. and search um, hotel in Ikorodu or yeah. best place to stay in Ikorodu, Iria Hotel pops up immediately, wow. has okay. the highest amount of reviews and ratings. Okay. So um, we have taken advantage of the digital space. Mm -hmm. At iRoyal Hotel Suits, also on Instagram, okay. is a place where you can go reach out to us, see okay. our facilities, see our upcoming events as well. So, um, you know, especially in the hospitality space, yeah. there's a lot of competition. Of course. It's huge. Um, and you did mention you're using SEO. That's um, search engine search optimization. Engine optimization yes. To make sure that people understand, uh, you know, what a niche market that is. But it is still considered competition. Very you true. Know? Uh, and you probably have some uh, methods or strategies to mm -hmm. combat that. Can you talk to us about it? Yes, so that's why it's um, iReal multi-concepts. Mm, so okay. um, the multi-concept part is um, just the entertainment side. So you come okay. into iReal as a guest. Yeah. Um, we have almost everything you need, so you don't have to leave the building. Oh. There's laundry, okay. there's the kitchen service, okay. there's even a saloon, there's a mini mart. Okay. We even have a bakery, iReal oh, So you don't need to go out. <laughs> iReal Optimum Loaf. So <laughs> all of these things would serve the guest mm -hmm. and the guest wouldn't even have to leave the building at all. So okay. the competition as well, mm -hmm. yes, we are aware of that, mm -hmm. but that's why we, we do training and retraining. It's mm -hmm. a constant thing for the staff. Yeah. They know how to attend to a guest, the kind of attitudes to portray and all of that. Okay, okay. But then you have to talk about pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, pricing and costing. I, I don't want you to tell me the exact price. Yeah. I want to talk. I want to talk about competitive pricing. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I think of competition, I think of all these battles that happen when you hear about a particular brand, uh, you know, pricing their 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 product a certain way. The brand that's in competition brings their price down, etc., etc. Et so there's no price wars going on at your end. Uh, of course there are, but mm. um, as a business. Mm. Uh, we are in an age where you do not just make decisions only based on your competition. Okay. You have to do some data analysis as well. There okay. are softwares that allow you to do that okay. and make those data-driven decisions. So we do our pricing competitively still with data that is available to us. Okay. And um, as we can also see, there's an economic um, wave going on. So all of those factors are into our um, pricing. But at the end of the day, when you put the service and the pricing side by side, it correlates and it is one that anyone who wants that service would be willing to pay okay. quickly.
Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I love the way you answered that. Honestly, <laughs> I couldn't have answered it better myself uh, because that is something people think about. Yeah. Um, because especially in hospitality, if something is priced too low, of course, the assumption is that the quality would not be so high. That's but then, true. if you price too high, the assumption is, um, you know, it's not as valuable as you know what the price is saying. Yeah. But I, from everything you've said about Ireal now, all the facilities you've put in there. Uh, which of them do you think is your biggest selling point? Our biggest selling point mm. is something related to the Ikurudu thing. And that's, the Ikurudu that's, thing, yes, okay. Yes, mm. all our points are very big, but I would say one of the biggest selling points for us is our security part. Oh, okay. So it's a very secured place. Okay. In fact, we can say it's the most secured place in Ikurudu. Really? Yes. Okay. Because um, we put all of that mm. into consideration knowing people might be coming into that um, mm. scope, um, landscape and would want a safe place to stay. Okay. I mean, for every hospitality um, establishment, even when you set everything where your food is good, yeah. your rooms are neat, yeah. people have to be secured. All right. So the biggest selling point for you guys is security. Yes. I, I actually appreciate that. Now, the fact that it is all the way in Ikorodu means that there's a certain level of uh, traffic that people might have to go through to mm -hmm. get there, you know. Um, so I, I am not a big fan of traffic getting there. Yeah. So have you figured out a way to sort of balance that out? Okay, um, <laughs> that's that's a challenge. Mm. That's a challenge. We won't, um, and it's not a challenge that um, we brought on ourselves. Of course. Yeah, of course but not. we also manage that. Um, mm. We have the airport shuttle service. Okay, okay. Yeah, so when you book online, you... If you inform us ahead, mm. we have um, also police escort vehicles. Oh, yes, to, amazing. To pick up guests. Okay. Yes, so okay. a lot of celebrities have been at the place, and wow. that's how we brought them in. Okay, all right yeah. then. So I, I think it's amazing what you guys are doing at IREAL. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really have to give you kudos for all the work that you guys have put in. And I'm also really ex um, you know, expecting more from you guys. It feels like you guys keep putting more and more in place. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us about right. that. Thank you very much for having me. All right. So um, at this point, I know that you guys have some really great food at IRL, but we also have a very great chef in the studio with yeah. us today. And uh, the chef has prepared something very interesting. Mm. Mazino, are we set? Oh, wow. we are set and ready to go, locked and loaded. Why don't you guys join oh, yeah. us, please? All Come right, on let's over. go. Okay. Titi, you two coming over? Oh, all Come right, over, fantastic. Please. Oh, yeah, please. you're all welcome. We've got, uh, <laughs> we've got more than enough for everybody, but uh, I don't know about you, Titi. <laughs> all right, please Yo. take a seat. Have yeah, a seat, thank please. You. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. morning. You know? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about I Royale and security. You guys yeah. uh, are in... Did you come over this oh, way, please? Okay. Yeah. Good. So tell, yes, tell me about um, security. Yeah, Ariel Hotel mm -hmm. and Suites is very secure in the mm -hmm. sense that um, we have um, government security. We Great. also have right. um, corporate security. Fantastic. So, uh, I mean, whatever level of security you mm -hmm. want is available there. Yeah. So. Security is always top on people's minds when yeah. it comes to hospitality. But enough talking, let's do chopping. Yeah. Right. Chef Ogo here has prepared us gizdodo. It looks fantastic. If you guys want her what, services. What do you call it? Gizdodo. Gizdodo. Gizadadodo. Oh, wow. <laughs> no. All put together. But it's fantastic. The preparation was fantastic. Mm. Chef, say something. Yeah. Yeah, that's enough. You said everything, but you know. Yeah, enough, said <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, but. I love the touch of green pepper. Yeah. Spray. Let's, let's have our guests have some. Okay. Can we? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Please. <laughs> Do yeah. try it. Tell us what you think real quick. Mm. Go ahead. You're going to love it because yeah. I've been skimping off I, of it. I, I love Dodo. Every, oh. every, I've not had a Giz one. You won't, be really? <laughs> you won't be Nigerian if you didn't like it. <laughs> Do try it out. Tell us what you think. Mm. It's tasty. But of course. Tasty. Nice All one. right. Thank you very tasty. much, man. Thank you for coming. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Chef Go, for being yeah. here. You look Thank fantastic, you by the way. Yes, and uh, we're yeah. going to be having you more and more of you. Yes, we will. This Did you? looks and tastes, well, smells amazing. Yeah. I'm going to be tasting it soon. No. Mazina's already tasted it. You're not going to I am not? No. I'm, not really? <laughs> I'm running away with that plate. Yeah, that. right. Let me pull a mic <laughs> on you guys <laughs> and just move with the pot. Uh, but a big shout out to everyone who was a part of the show today. Yes, it's indeed. been full of energy and full of life and hopefully that's how the rest of the week is going to be yes all right we'll all be back right. again tomorrow morning yeah yes for a tuesday edition join us for wake up nigeria we love you goodbye see you tomorrow <laughs>